Hello, welcome to the Play Resource Inspiration channel. Today we will be demonstrating two 3D painting techniques. For this you will need, from the Play Resource shop, masking tape, PVA glue, white tissue paper, acrylic paint and paint brushes. From the scrap store you will need plastic cone, sponge and plastic tubs. What we're going to do is take one of these lovely plastic cones. So I get a length of masking tape, not very scientific, and I'm just going to twist it and then I'm just going to wind it round. We're not really concerned with what it is, it's just to give you an idea of what you can actually do with some of the play resource materials. We want a kind of organic texture to be able to demonstrate some of these techniques. Keep going until we've got it all covered. You don't want great big gaps, but what we're looking for is a textured surface, so something that isn't totally flat. I'm going to use some acrylic paint. I'm going to use some PVA. A little bit of glue will make the paint a bit gloopier and a bit stickier, and it will be a little bit easier when we come to stick on the tissue paper. And also it's important that we give it a good base coat so that whatever colour you apply um, is really going to stand out, especially if it's a light colour. So now we're just about ready to leave that to dry overnight. Okay, now that this is dried, um, we're going to start off with our first colour. So we're going to do quite a light and bright colour so it'll provide a nice contrast for our later technique. We're also going to use sponge just because it's quite a quick method of getting the paint into all the nooks and crannies that we've created with our texture of masking tape and tissue. I'm using acrylic again. Here we need to be a little bit more careful that we apply an even layer because if we go to town and have a lot of brush strokes then that's going to mess up the texture. Okay, so that's us. You can leave that down and let that dry. It'll dry quite quickly if it's a thin layer, especially if it's acrylic. If you're not too sure, just leave it overnight and it will definitely be dry in the morning. So we're going to add um, a nicely contrasting paint burnt sienna. Add a little bit of PVA to make this mixture a little bit gloopy so that some of the paint is going to definitely remain on my object. Again, this is something that you want to do quite quickly, especially if you're using acrylic. Don't worry about totally covering. You can have little crevices and cracks. This technique is very quick and very easy and is really useful for um, textured objects when you're trying to make them look like something else, for example, wood or stone, anything organic, um, and it adds a really nice element of depth. I'm gonna get my sponge ready. I'm just gonna dampen it. Don't want it to be too wet because then it will take off too much paint. And we're just quickly going to take some paint off, just very, carefully go through on those top bits with my damp sponge. So that's the technique finished. Whenever you're satisfied that you've got a good amount of contrast between your two colours, here the yellow and the brown, and that's us all done. And we can wait for that to dry. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of blending now. I'm going to use two colours, separate brushes, and use a dry brush technique to blend those two colours. What you want to remember, especially if you're using acrylic, is that you work quite quickly. This is particularly effective when you're doing any kind of scenery or backdrops that have a 3D element, as you can really emphasise those points. I've got my line there that's a little bit further away from the vine. The paint has to be a uniform thickness. If the paint is too thick in one area, you're not going to get a very good blend. As you can see there, I'm just making sure that those two colours 
are not touching. So here I've got my dry brush and I'm just going to move from one to the other. Okay, so I'm picking up paint on my brush as I go. If I feel I'm getting too much paint, I use a bit of a rag or some sponge to get rid of the excess paint. So as you can see, even now it's starting to dry out a little bit. So we've got a little bit of a line. So as you, you're happy with one part, then you go around, keep going, and then <clears throat> you can start again when you've got the whole thing and just retouch any little areas if you've gone over. So that's our second technique finished. And we'll leave that to dry overnight. So here are some other examples of um, things that you can do to add uh, to the techniques that you've been shown today. One is adding tissue um, to add a little bit more texture and colour, um, working its way up the spiral vine that we picked out here with the blending technique. And this is just using some overpainting over a gradient blend. So we're going from light to dark. So all the materials that we've used here today are available from Play Resource. Mm -hmm.